Hi guys, Olive here, here today to show you some of the books that I've picked up recently. For whatever reason, I've been doing a ton of book shopping lately. I was able to go into a couple of different used bookstores, and I think I got a little bit overly excited. I was able to safely shop there. I was the only person in both of the stores that I visited, but also I've been doing a lot of online shopping, as I very much enjoy doing. So I've had a lot of books entering this reading room over the past few months. Months, but it didn't really make sense for me to sit down and show you all of them. That would just be way too much of a video for me to do and probably for you to watch. So what I did was I went through all the books that I've acquired and I sorted them by season. And I, of course, thought since we're now in the season of spring, although the temperature outside could have fooled me, since we're technically heading towards spring, I thought it would be appropriate to show you all the spring-like books that I've acquired. By my count, I have 25 books to share with you. And again, it's only a portion of the books that I've picked up recently. So that is to say we should probably get started here. I'm going to start off by talking about two different novels. I I think I have three total novels in this entire haul, which is very me being the nonfiction lover that I am. But I figured I would start with two of the novels because I discuss fiction so infrequently these days. So the first book I would like to show you is Lullabies for Little Criminals by Heather O'Neill. This is actually a recommendation I got off of Instagram. Sheila Bennett. Hi, Sheila. We were talking about Lonely Hearts Hotel, The Lonely Hearts Hotel by Heather O'Neill. That was one of my favorite works of fiction of last year. And I shared a picture of it on Instagram. And she and I got to talking about how amazing Heather O'Neill is. And I said I would like to read more of her work since The Lonely Hearts Hotel is the only book of hers that I've ever read. And Sheila recommended that I pick up this one next. This book follows a 13-year-old girl who is is being raised, or rather is not being raised, by her heroin addict father. This girl has a talent for spinning stories. She also happens to be exceptionally beautiful, which unfortunately draws the attention of the wrong people. From what I know about Heather O'Neill's writing style, this seems like a quintessentially Heather O'Neill book, that kind of unique combination of whimsy, but also grim. So if this reminds me at all of The Lonely Hearts Hotel, I am sure I'm going to love it. This the second novel I'd like to show you is actually another follow-up from last year because I bought Father of the Rain by Lily King. Her book that came out last year, Writers and Lovers, was another one of my favorite novels of 2020. I loved that book so much. I was actually lucky enough to be able to review it for the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. I'll link that review down below in case you didn't see it. I'm just very lucky that I got to review that book that I loved so much for my local paper. It was just a dream come true. But another one of Lily King's older books, Euphoria, is another favorite of mine. It has stayed with me in such a huge way over the years. So I decided this year I would really like to make a concerted effort to read more of her work. Obviously, I like her writing style. I like her books. So I want to explore her back catalog. And I thought this would be a good place to start. This one came out in 2010, and it follows a young woman and her alcoholic father. Next up, I'd like to show you a whole bunch of different books that all contain food writing. I don't really know why, but I've been super interested in food writing lately. A lot of different books that contain food writing have caught my eye. I've been buying them. And for reasons that I can't fully articulate, they seemed appropriate for the springtime. So I thought I'd show them in this haul. And the first one I want to show you is a memoir. It is called Lunch in Paris, a love story with recipes by Elizabeth Bard. This book was on clearance on Barnes & Noble's website. I was there buying a gift for someone and I saw this one at a very low price and so it somehow just made its way into my basket. This book is a mixture of memoir and food writing. It was written by an American journalist. And her story is that she went to France. She went to Paris on a weekend trip. And while she was there, she had lunch with a handsome Frenchman and then just never left France after that. So this book is her love story with that Frenchman, but also with French cuisine in general, hence why there are recipes in here. And the next book I picked up also has recipes in it. It's called Chronicles of a Radical Hag by Lorna Landvik. And I will freely admit that yes, I did buy this book because of the title. This book takes place in the aftermath of the death of a small town newspaper columnist. Our main character in this book is the publisher 
publisher of that paper. And she steps in after this death in order to start reprinting some of this columnist's old columns. They want to have something to fill the space and they want to figure out what they're doing with the paper next. But until that point, they're reprinting old work. Well, through the process of reprinting these old columns, it seems like our main character starts to gain insight into that columnist's life and background. It seems like some old small town secrets might be revealed by those old columns. This book seemed like part Gilmore Girls, part Dear Sugar, and part Ruth Rachel. And for those reasons, I had to have it. I just realized that earlier in this haul video, I lied to you because I said there were only three novels in this haul when actually there are four. Because speaking of Ruth Rachel, I happened to find a really nice looking copy of her novel, Delicious. I think I got confused because this is a novel, but I think it's at least semi-autobiographical. It follows a young woman who moves to New York to take a job at a famous food magazine. And then while she's working there, she discovers a foodie mystery. Obviously, it draws inspiration from Ruth Rachel's own life since she was the editor of Gourmet Magazine for many years. But I have heard some mixed reviews of this one. I think I'm going to hold off on reading this one until I've read more of her nonfiction, which is an area that I've been wanting to explore more. I've read barely any of her nonfiction. I want to do that before I dig into this one. But there's actually a second famous food writer in this haul because I also picked up two different books by MFK Fisher. The first one I picked up is called As They Were. This is a collection of essays all about her life and its adventures and Two Towns in Provence, in which she discusses her time spent in Provence and also in Marseille from the early 1930s through the mid 1970s. I shamefully have never read any MFK Fisher. I really feel like that needs to change. And I was hoping that picking up two new works of hers would motivate me to do so. But since we're talking about France, I'll say that I also picked up The Botanist and The Vintner, How Wine Was Saved for the World by Christy Campbell. This is a work of nonfiction that tells the story of this botanist who was sent to southeastern France in the 1860s because there were these mysterious microscopic yellow insects that were were destroying grapevines and therefore crippling the wine industry. This botanist figured out the problem. He believed he had the solution. And using that solution, he actually did save the wine industry. And for that, sir, you have my gratitude. This next book I'd like to show you is actually one of, I think, only two books in this entire haul that I bought brand new. I typically don't buy brand new books. It has to be something really special for me to pay full cover price. But I saw a review of this next one in the New York Times, and I just had to get my hands on it. After reading that review, it's called The Book of Difficult Fruit by Kate Lebo. This is an essay collection. It's a collection of 26 essays, one for every letter of the alphabet, and each letter stands for a different fruit. This book apparently combines natural, cultural, personal and medical history, which I don't even know what that kind of combination would look like, but it sounds absolutely fascinating. I am already in the middle of a five-star prediction project, but if I weren't, if I were just starting from scratch and creating an all-new list, this book would definitely be on there. And continuing with the rather subtle trend in this haul video, going from talking about more general food writing into talking about more specific food items in books, I also picked up Milk by Mark Kurlansky. This is a Mark Kurlansky book, so of course it's a micro history, but it's actually about more than just cow's milk, as the container of milk on the cover might imply. It's actually about humans consuming the milk of other mammals in general, so other domesticated creatures as well. I have a little bit of a mixed history with microhistory. I'm always intrigued by their concepts, but I find in their execution that they're more surface level than I would like. I like books to be a little bit more thorough, but I have always been interested in reading this one. I know I put it on a TBR about 100 million years ago, but it was a library book and it had to go back to the library before I finished it. So I decided to just go ahead and get my own copy. I also picked up a book about another ingredient that 
that just so happens to double as my name. I picked up Olive Odyssey, Searching for the Secrets of the Fruit that Seduced the World by Julie Angus. This book is essentially a biography of the olive, and this author traveled across the Mediterranean researching this book. And I did not just pick this book up because it has my name plastered across the top of it. I'm actually really interested in olives. Ironically enough, I don't eat them. I don't really like them. But regardless, I will be very happy to learn more about my namesake. But also I should mention that this is a Greystone book. Greystone, the publisher Greystone. I absolutely love them. They are one of my favorite publishers. I've been lucky enough to develop a really good relationship with them over the years because pretty much everything they put out there, I love. It's directly up my alley and it always hits the mark for me. Their books are just incredible. And the other day I got the urge randomly to start looking through their older catalogs of books to see what books they've published in previous years because I think the chances are good that I will love them. And so I saw a whole bunch of titles that I was interested in and I ordered used copies of a whole bunch of them. And this is one of them, but I also have more of them to show you. The next Greystone book I bought is called An Ecology of Enchantment, A Year in the Life of a Garden by Des Kennedy. I picked up this book and the next book I have to show you because I very much have gardening on the brain right now. My garden is just getting started. I have a whole bunch of baby plants living in a greenhouse on our screened in porch. And when it is warm enough, which I'm hoping is very, very soon, I will transplant them into some raised beds. So I'm definitely in that mood. I definitely would love to read more about gardening because I'm still very much an amateur, but I'm finding that I really love it. And like I said, this next book also has to do with gardening. It's called My Natural History, The Evolution of a Gardener by Lisa Primo. This book is all about the author's lifelong passion for gardening. Like I said, I do want to read more about gardening, and this one is extremely short, so I'm wondering if I should actually read this one the same weekend that I transplant those seedlings. The next Greystone book I would like to show you is called Trauma Farm, A Rebel History of Rural Life by Brian Brett. This book seems to be both a memoir, but also a collection of discussions about farming in general. At the time the author author wrote this book, he had been running his own small farm for the past 18 years. So it seems like he talks about that experience and also compares that experience against big agribusiness. Let's just say that even though I live in a city right now, I am familiar with rural life. I lived on a farm very briefly. I am a Pennsylvania girl through and through. Don't let the elocution fool you. I am much more comfortable at a farmer's market than I am at an art museum. So I'm very intrigued by this book. And then the last Greystone book that I have to show you in this haul, it's actually not the last Greystone book I bought. I bought a bunch more, but some of them I feel are more appropriate for other seasons. So I will save those for future haul videos. But the the last Greystone book I'll show you in this haul is actually the first bird book I have to show you in this haul. It's called An Enchantment of Birds, Memories from a Birder's Life by Richard Cannings. This is a memoir in which the author discusses his long history with birding, which is a hobby I hope to take up here before too long. Continuing on the bird theme, I also picked up The Wonderful Mr. Willoughby, the first true ornithologist by Tim Burkhead. This is a book all about Francis Willoughby, a man who lived in the 17th century and who, along with his Cambridge tutor, was attempting to categorize the entire avian worlds. But unfortunately, he died before their joint project could be completed and then published. And because he was dead when it was published, he really didn't get a lot of credit. So this is a book all about him as a person, but it's also about his long unsung contributions. Then I also got my hands on a copy of Birds by the Shore by Jennifer Ackerman. This is an older book by the author of The Genius of Birds, a very popular bird book that I also enjoyed very much. The publisher reissued this book with a gorgeous new cover after the success of The Genius of Birds, and I wanted to get my own copy of it. It's all about shorebirds and seabirds, as you can probably guess. And while I don't have any plans myself to go to the beach this summer, because I personally still think it's a good idea to stay away from people a little bit longer, maybe I can pretend I'm there if I read this book and put on some beach ambient noise. And then the second book in this haul that I bought, brand spanking new, is is called A World on the Wing, The Global Odyssey of Migratory Birds by Scott Widensall. Now, just looking at this cover, 
It doesn't look or seem much different than just your average bird book. I certainly have read about migration in a number of different bird books. I own a ton of books on specifically migration that I haven't yet read. So this wouldn't have been a book that I rushed to go purchase brand new. I probably would have waited until I could find a remaindered copy of this book or a used copy. But I heard such extraordinary things about this book. People have just raved about it. So I decided it was worth it to just buy it new. And then the last bird book I have to show you in this haul is one that I found when I was at a used bookstore in the greater Pittsburgh area. I was shopping there by appointment. And when I saw this book, I nearly screamed because I've never even heard of it before. And it looks so amazing. It's called All About Birds, A Short Illustrated History of Ornithology by Valerie Chansigod. This is a gorgeous book from Princeton University Press, and it has illustrations on basically every single page. And it just tells the history of the field of ornithology. I am so excited that I found this. I am so thrilled to own this book now. This book alone was worth that trip. But while I was in that exact same store, I also came across this really cute little natural history book called Into the Porcupine Cave and Other Odysseys, Adventures of an Occasional Naturalist by William W. Warner. And this is a collection of essays all about different animal encounters this author has had beginning in the 1930s. And it just seemed so lovely, so charming, and I had to bring it home with me. Another natural history book I picked up is called The Wood for the Trees, One Man's Long View of Nature by Richard Forty. This author is a scientist, and when he retired, he bought four acres of woodland in England. And this book is essentially a portrait of his time spent there. We get to experience all four seasons in this area. We get to experience the wildlife and the history of the area. And I, for one, cannot wait to travel there in book form. Another work of natural history, I also picked up His Imperial Majesty, A Natural History of the Purple Emperor by Matthew Oates. Everyone seemed really, really excited about a different butterfly book that I mentioned in my most recent anticipated releases video. So I thought this one might be of interest as well. The last three books I have to show you in this haul are three more popular nonfiction books. So you very well may have heard of them before, may have even read them before, but I at long last am finally picking them up. The first of those three is a memoir and it's called Unbowed by Wangari Mathai. The author of this memoir won the Nobel Peace Prize she established the Green Belt Movement in 1977, and she served as both a minister and a member of parliament in the Kenyan government. And this is her life story. The penultimate book in this book haul, I am sure you have seen somewhere on the internet. It has been incredibly popular over the past few months. It's called World of Wonders in Praise of Fireflies, Whale Sharks, and Other Astonishments by Amy Nizuku Matatil. This book is a little wonder indeed. It was published by Milkweed, which is another publisher that I absolutely love. And I think this one has gotten raves from literally every single person who has ever picked it up. I have heard only wonderful things about this book. Apparently it's a collection of lyrical essays about different, sometimes strange creatures and organisms. And apparently there are elements of memoir thrown in there as well. I have a very, very strong feeling I'm going to adore this. And then the final book in this haul is another one that I've needed to pick up for a very long time. It's called Entangled Life, How Fungi Make Our Worlds, Change Our Minds, and Shape Our Futures by Merlin Sheldrake. This is a book, of course, all about fungi and how essential it is to basically everything Thing, even things you wouldn't even think of. I recently read and reviewed two different books on mushrooms. And after reading and loving those books, I knew I had to get my hands on and read basically every book about fungus out there. So this is the start of a new collection, I guess. So there you have it, 25 new to me books for the spring. If you've read any of these books, you wanna share your thoughts on them with me, or if any of the books in this haul are calling your name, you yourself wanna read them, or you'd like to see me review them, please let me know any or even all of that down in the comment section below. But if you would like to keep up with what I'm reading and writing about right now, you can find me on various places on the internet, including social media and the links to everywhere that you can find me will be in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I will see you in the next video.
Bye. Bye.